All right, hey guys, I'm Robert from Vario Graphics, and this is Jordan. What's up, guys? Um, we're wrapping Extreme Experiences Lead Cars, uh, as probably you guys seen in the last video. And in this video, we're going to show you guys five mistakes, maybe a couple more. I don't know. We're just going to throw them out there, what you should avoid when wrapping. Um, the first one is just, it's not really a mistake, but making sure that your prep is done correctly. If it's not prepped correctly, you're going to get dirt under it. There's going to be things peeling up, everything's gonna just turn to a mess. So the first thing is really get a good prep. We start off with a clay bar. Well, technically we start off with a cleaning. Yeah. This has already been cleaned. So then you start off after that, you're gonna clay bar it. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. I'm just gonna do a little spot because just for now, so it's all smooth. So clay barring gets off all the little micro things that are in the clear coat and makes it all smooth for the wrap to go on. Then the next step would be alcohol. Um, always recommended to use isopropyl. The other thing he didn't really show you either when he was clay barring, we really want to get into these crevices here. So these crevices, anything like this, this is where all the dirt is trapped and it's going to pop up. So. After that, then you'll take your rag, put some alcohol down, wipe it down. And I also like to take a squeegee if I have one. I sure do. Never leave home without it. We take our squeegee and I like to just kind of get in these cracks here to really make sure that everything's clean. Now, one of the first mistakes that a lot of people tend to do when wrapping is overstretch. So, you want to show them? Yeah. An overstretch? Mm-hmm. that down. Mind you, this is a printed graphic. So... You obviously see the detail. And so on printed graphics, you kind of see the overstretch more, which is one of the reasons we're using the printed graphic to demonstrate. But people tend on these contours or curves or anything, they tend to start pulling and just pull way too much. So. Put it down. So now you can see our graphic is starting to get distorted. It's starting to move. I mean, it kind of looks distorted regardless, but it's starting to move out of place. And then now if we pick it back up and we reheat, you see it all just start to shrink. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to put this down overstretched because if I put it down overstretched and I squeegee it, this is a rough squeegee, guys. Don't do this. <laughs> and I squeegee it. Now, if you try to put the heat here, just to kind of show them, over time, with sun beating down, all that stuff, things will start popping up. And it's just never going to really sit correctly. Yeah. So if you were to like push it down. If you push it down, it's gonna pop back up. It takes some time, it's heating, cooling, the contrast, but these films are not rated for this type of stretching. Um, so, and then here's another mark that kind of tells you you've overstretched. I don't know if you can see that line. And that's because this is ink. So uh, it's latex ink, and the latex ink has been discolored because it's overstretched. So that's one main thing we want to try to avoid. The next thing we kind of want to show you guys is changing blades after every cut. So really after every cut you do, there you go. 
After every cut you do, you should be snapping the blade. And that's why we use these snap blades. He's got one, I got one. And every blade will come off. So sometimes, that, well, what happen if you don't trim your blade is you sometimes get these jaggedy cuts. Sometimes, not all the time. It'll become like a little shark fin or if you cut your snap your blade like I already have, it'll just be straight. But after a while, if you don't cut your blade, you can get little bumps and it really does not look good inside some of the crevices. The next mistake really everybody should avoid no matter who you are, what kind of car you have, is cutting on the vehicle. And I see this from a lot of guys where it won't be necessarily here, but let's say we're gonna lay this down uh, here. So we're gonna have our line here, and then we'll have this piece here. You know, it'll be an overlap of some sort. And then you'll have some sort of overlap so that way we could try to have the seam follow the body line. And then I'll see guys pull out their blades and then cut on the car. Now, after you've been trained, after you've been doing this for a while, some guys possibly can do it. But when you have a $100,000 car, obviously we don't want to cut through any clear coat or paint. So it would be best to avoid that. So the alternative to doing that would be, I wish I had this handy, right? That would have been nice, guys. The alternative would be some knifeless tape. So we could lay down a line of knifeless here. We'll cut that. Now, when we lay this down, here. We can peel this back. And now we have our overlap. Nice and seam. No one had to cut on a car. Ruin a hundred thousand dollar car. Obviously you would keep this tighter. You know, you'd probably want to line it up so it's nice and straight along the other one and really hide that seam. But it's just another thing that we see all the time and best to avoid. Next thing we uh, like to try to avoid, a lot of guys who rap use torches. And with your torch, you can, I should really just use a squeegee and stop trying to be Superman with my glove. So with your torch, on matte film, you can gloss it by getting too close. So if I'm trying to stretch this down, and it comes with the torch because we have some wrinkles. And I'll get too close. And there we go. Literally gloss the film. So we'll have this spot here, and that'll never go away. We can lay it down. It's still hot. We can lay it down, but it's completely different finish. And then we'll take some alcohol or some soap and water. Take some soap and water and try and clean that off. And of course, I use soap and water and now it's still wet. There you go, and it's still there. There's no way to get that out. It's stuck in the vinyl. So definitely want to avoid getting too close with a torch. You could either do that or you could burn the vinyl, which is another thing that happens that, you know, I see it quite often actually. So now another thing we should try to avoid using uh, at all costs, and that's uh, 3M primer. So this, it helps the adhesive adhere to the vehicle. Now the problem is, some people would try to use it in like a crevice like this. Because if not, then you're wrapping, wrapping, trying to tuck it into this, and then pull it out and over, which is technically what we did here. But some people will try to skip past that, put a bead of primer in here, wrap, leave this tented, which I could just show you guys, instead of, we'll use that same material we just used to show you how not to burn your material. So we'll wrap here, they'll wrap here, and we'll leave it tented like this. 
So you'll have this tent here and then they'll take heat. After they've already primered in here, they'll take heat and then try to slam it down in there. Right now, if I did it without primer, this is absolutely popping up. The primer will prevent it from popping up. Now the issue is, when you go and remove your vinyl, everywhere you've primered will be just caked on with glue. So now, before we can wrap again, before we can do anything with the vehicle, we're gonna have to clean all this glue off. And that has taken, what, eight hours sometimes? Yeah. So, a whole day of two to three guys cleaning off a car because someone tried it to, to do it the easy way. And it's just something we really would like to avoid at all costs. And it will mess up your clear coat and kind of take it off when also taking off the glue. That's why you're never supposed to use it on cars or use it on commercial vehicles, but not everywhere. It's just in those deep crevices where you kind of need just a little bit Another thing we want to try and avoid is when designing. So this is printed. Uh, when designing the print, we want to try to avoid putting any copy by door handles, keyholes. If there's a molding here that's going to distort a uh, phone number or something, we want to try to avoid it. So the way this was designed, the copy is actually going to go here, which we're placing on after because there's going to be a different finish on that copy, which you've probably already seen from another video. Um, but it'll have a different finish than the, the background print. But the copy actually is placed here and like avoids these, avoids this. Actually, we utilize this right here with the Goodyear, but we kind of avoid placing anything that's kind of get distorted in any of these things. But that's it's just a great tip from a design aspect which a lot of designers just come from school you know you learn your graphic design and you really don't know how to place things on a vehicle but it's something that's very important because i've seen so many wraps that are just completely thrown off you you'll have a phone number and the three's cut off the eight's cut off and then you know it's kind of hard to tell what the phone number is versus just having it right underneath to make it clean thanks for checking out our video hope you learned what not to do when wrapping don't be discouraged if you guys run into issues, still can't figure it out. Just practice, 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 and you guys will end up figuring it out. Um, we're super stoked to get back to Extreme Experiences cars, wrap these Hellcats, get them back on the track. This is Robert, the Rap Jedi from Vario Graphics. This is Jordan. Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> so you can check us out on Instagram, everywhere, and hopefully we see you guys on the track soon. Hey.